May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, celebrate today in black a mass for the deceased of the friars and sisters and benefactors of our order. We look at the souls in purgatory today then. St. Bernard of Siena says that in that prison of souls who are spouses of Jesus Christ, Mary, our mother has a certain dominion and a plenitude of power to relieve them as well as deliver them from their pains. He says that the pains of purgatory are called waves because they are transitory. Unlike the pains of hell, which never end, they are called waves of the sea because they are very bitter pains. The servants of Mary, tormented by those pains, are often visited, though, and relieved by the lady. See then how important it is to be a servant of our good lady, for she never forgets such when they are suffering in those flames. And although Mary helps all the souls in purgatory, yet she always obtains more indulgences and alleviations for those who have been especially her children and devoted to her. This Divine Mother, in her revelations to St. Bridget, said, I am the mother of all souls in purgatory, and all the sufferings which they merit for the sins committed in life and every hour, while they remain there, alleviated in some measure by my prayers. This kind mother then sometimes condescends even to enter into that holy prison, to visit and console her afflicted children. I have penetrated into the bottom of the deep. We read in the book of Ecclesiasticus. St. Bonaventure applying these words adds, I have penetrated the depth of this abyss, that is of purgatory, to relieve by my presence those holy souls. Oh, how kind and beneficent is the Holy Virgin to those who are suffering in purgatory, says St. Vincent Ferrier. Through her they receive continual consolation and refreshment. What other consolation have they in their sufferings than Mary and the help of the Mother of Mercy? Christ is the King of Justice, but Our Lady is the Mother of Mercy. St. Bridget one day heard Christ saying to his mother, Thou art my mother, thou art the Mother of Mercy. Thou art the consoler of those who are in purgatory. Blessed Virgin herself said to St. Bridget that as a poor sick person suffering and deserted on his bed feels himself refreshed by some word of consolation, so those souls feel themselves consoled in hearing the very name Mary, the name alone of Mary, the name of hope and salvation, which those beloved children who invoke in that prison gives them great comfort. But then the loving mother, on hearing herself invoked by them, adds her prayers to the Lord, by which these souls receive comfort and find their burning pains cool as if a dew from heaven. But not only does Mary console and have her servants in purgatory, she also releases them from this prison and delivers them by her intercession. For example, on the day of her glorious assumption, in which that prison is said to have been emptied, the very assumption of Our Lady, many authors relate that Mary, when about to be assumed in paradise, asked this favor from her son Christ, that she might take with her all the souls that were in purgatory from that time. The Blessed Virgin has possessed the privilege of freeing her servants from those pains, now especially on her feast days. This is also asserted by Saint Bernardine of Siena, who says that the Blessed Virgin has the 
power of delivering the souls from purgatory by her prayers and the application of her merits, especially for those who have been devoted to her by their merits of Mary. Not only the torments of these souls are alleviated, but also abridged. The time of purgation being shortened by her intercession. For this is, it is enough, she presents herself to pray for them. St. Denis of Carthusian relates that on the festivals of the birth and resurrection of Jesus Christ, especially to great days to release many souls from purgatory who descends there, but the mother. The mother descends to purgatory accompanied by troops of angels and releases many, many souls from their torments. Everyone we know has heard the promise made by Mary to Pope John XXII, to whom she appeared and ordered him to make known to all those who wear the brown scapula of Carmel that on the Saturday after the death, they shall be released from purgatory. Paul, in 1612, in a, in a bull said that Christians, that Christians may piously believe that the Blessed Virgin will aid by her continual intercession by her merits and special protection after death, and principally on a Saturday, a day which is consecrated by the Church to the Lady, the souls of the members of the confraternity of the Holy Mary of Mount Carmel, who shall have departed this life in a state of grace, one scapula, observed chastity according to their state of life, recited the office of the Virgin, if they have been not able to do so, shall have observed the fasts of the church, abstained from flesh meat on Wednesdays and Fridays except on Christmas Day. And in the solemn office of the Feast of the Mary of Mount Carmel, we read that is piously believed that the Holy Virgin, with the Mother's love, consoles these very members of the confraternity of Mount Carmel in purgatory. By her intercession, conducts them to their heavenly homeland. This is the power of Our Lady. If you should find yourself one day languishing in purgatory, let us hope that you have been a child of the Lady. Why should we not also hope for the same graces and favors if we are devoted to the Mother? And if with more special love we serve her, why? Cannot we hope to obtain the grace of going immediately to paradise without entering into purgatory? As we read that the Holy Virgin said to Blessed Godfrey in these words, Go and tell Godfrey to advance in virtue, for thus he will be my a child of my son and mine also. And when his soul quits the body, I will not permit it to go to purgatory, but I will take it and present it to my son. This is what we saw a few days ago, Our Lady interceding for St. James, the greater the apostle, carrying his son, carrying the soul of this apostle to God's throne of mercy. This has to be our prayer also. And if we would assist these holy souls in purgatory then with acts of charity, let us endeavor to remember them in all our prayers to the Blessed Virgin, applying to them, especially the Holy Rosary, which procures for them great relief. Why not storm heaven by praying multiple rosaries for these souls, the church suffering, who are most close to the eternal beatitude? Surely they will remember you fighting in this valley of tears, and intercede for you in paradise, so that one day you will meet these souls face to face in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.